What's going on YouTube? It's Bam Raga Bam here reacting to the deadly war in East London 98 versus the ZTs. Damn. Um, uh, the 98s, I know they consist of. Who did they have again? Unknown T, V9, KO. I can't remember the rest. But, um, Suspect's wife, Halima. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? But yeah, listen, you lot. We're on the road to 100 k Let me know what documentaries you want me to react to in the comments below, and I'll get out for you ASAP. The same way you lot told me to react to this yesterday, I'm reacting to it today. Straight, I'm active. But um, let's run this one. I'm excited. Okay, today we are in Hackney, which is a borough in London. Hackney ranks particularly highly on the child population. Hey, love for the follow. At 41%, making it the third highest in London. Hey, chat. Can you all hear it? Yeah, clearly. Wick has undergone gentrification ever since the Olympics in 2012, and the area now attracts richer, younger professionals. However, it is still one of the most deprived areas gone. Great. in the city. Today, we'll be looking at two gangs who have been warring each other for more than two decades: 98s and ZTs. 98s being a combination of homage. More than two decades. That's 20 years. I was five years old. I said more than actually. But flipping out, that's some like real life. That was literally beef before I got there. That's literally the beef you get brought into. Like, yeah. Some generational beef. Mom was generational wealth, not beef. Located in E9 and Holly Street, located in E8. Hence, 98. Okay. ZT, aka Zero Tolerance, are located in London Fields. They hit Netflix show Top Boys based on a real London Fields gang, Zero Tolerance. Oh my days. I actually love Top Boy and I never knew that. Hey, chat, did you know that? I didn't know that. They hit Netflix show Top Boys based on a real London Fields gang, Zero Tolerance. ZTs stand for Zero Tolerance. London Fields, an infamous estate located in Hackney, East London. In the I didn't know that. Eight postcode. It has already been known for its violence, especially in the late 90s and early 2000s. Historically, they beefed TMD, Tottenham, Mandem. During the same time, London... I don't get that. Ain't Tottenham and E4. Tottenham and that is N. So North, East, bro. Ain't that like an hour driving that? Like how, like how do they have Paso? I'm baffled. The field started beefing with another infamous Hackney crew, that being LOM, Love of Money, located across several estates in the E5 and N16 postcodes. This specific beef started when Fox started robbing prominent London field boys, such as DC and Hypo, also shooting Hypo on the same occasion. Back then, Homerton was known as Balance, and it was part of the E9 to E5. Balance. Balance Road. Bullens Road. Cause look, right here. Look, that, that that's not balance. Link up, known as nine two five. He looks like Mark Duggan, the guy in the pit the at the bottom of the middle. Time. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. Things, however, changed due to greed, robberies, and but that man got real pasta. Pepe Brown, a twenty-year-old leader of a gang of youth, wanted revenge on two youngsters who belonged to London Fields. He and his gang, the Holly Street Boys, were joined by the Square Boys, a gang based in... Do you say the Square Boys? He and his gang, SBs. the Holly Street Boys, were joined by the Square Boys, a gang SBs. based in Clapton. Aaron Salmon, one of the leaders of the Square Boys, who was a 17-year-old crack cocaine dealer, had just been robbed by some London field boys at gunpoint. His car and heavy jewellery was taken, and to make matters worse, it happened all in front of his girlfriend. So on the 9th of June 2003, Pepe Brown. Man said 2003 we're talking about, you know. I was flipping five years old. Literally. They need to stop beefing, bro. A lot of you, man, in the chat was even born. <laughs> Aaron Salmon and two others, armed with a pistol and a shotgun, and with their faces hidden by ski masks and balakalavas, drove up in a convoy of three cars where LFB member JD was spotted. So was born in 04. shot dead at the junction. Like D Wags. You're the same age as D Wagon. As he played the game of money up with his friend. 
JD was the brother of CS, the London Fields boss, so you can imagine the significance of his death and why they've been warring since. Pepe Brown and Aaron Salman were both sentenced to life. Hey, what happened to this guy? Did you see outside? For the murder of JD. Now, Derek Boateng, also known as D Dot, was an up and coming London Fields member who was deeply loved. Sadly, on the 24th of April 2013, on his 16th birthday, he was attacked in broad daylight on the 393 bus in Highbury, New Park, North London, at around 3 pm on Tuesday. By 9 the guy looks like a baby, bro. Yeah, his little bro got smoked, sadly. That's mad. He has that ATS from Dot Boy. Five Pembury member known as Skid. D Dot received a stab wound to the heart. He was later airlifted. That's what I'm saying, yeah. People that be shanking people are, are like, I'm not saying these niggas. I don't know what they got going on. But, but, but like, 90% of niggas that be shanking niggas, they're wet in the terms of like, you only need to use a knife if one that nigga stronger than you, or two your life's in danger, bro. Like the D dot guy, he like obviously looks are deceiving. But what I can see right now, he's just a young. He looks like a baby, bro. Like for real, he looks like he's like fourteen, thirteen. Like why would you need a knife? Catch him about the shank still fold. No hundred. Did where he was on life support for a couple of days and it was considered that he was brain dead. He sadly died in hospital. 15 year old Skid, real name Sean Green, was charged with his murder. Sean Green claimed he carried the knife because he was scared after an alleged attack by Derek six months ago, an explanation which Judge Fulton said did not ring true. He said the jury had rejected his claims of self-defense and that the courts would do everything they can do to stop this terrible crime. Whatever the reason said the judge, you attacked him and killed him. Sadly, he had the knife and produced it to defend himself. You leant over a woman in the aisle seat and stabbed him in it. Bro, that's never going to be self-defense. You having a knife on you is never going to be self-defense. Self-defense is if like that nigga's got a knife, somehow you punch him or disarm him and then you bore him up. That's self-defense. But... Me having my knife out, or me walking the strip with my knife and out, and then I buck into it up, and I do him. That's not self-defense, bro. That's just how it goes. Chess, a knife is a weapon that cuts and kills so easily. He added you were seen watching... Only 12 years. That nigga should be out then. Damn. The bus, you knew then at least you had injured him severely. That's what you went to the flats to dispose of the knife. Sean Green was jailed for a minimum of 12 years. After his death, D Dot's friends would create zero tolerance in his honor. Prominent Z team members include Ballistic, Frisco, Psycho, Trey, Asbo, etc. Now J Dot was a Homerton member whose real name was Jeremy Malenki. He was a refugee from Congo who got asylum in the UK in 2004 for a better life. Academically, he didn't waste that opportunity as he was a straight-A student. He was good friends with a girl known as Sana Ibrahim. She was everything he would want in a female friend. Little did he know she was everything but a friend. On the 6th of January... Bro, straight-ahead girls involved, bro. I just know someone's gonna die, bro. Like, that's it. Like, straight away there's a girl involved. That's a 12 years for an M charge. It's crazy. I think it's because he was 15. So they didn't trial him as an adult. But yeah, straight away there's a girl involved. Oh no. 2015, Gashi and J Dot were joined by Sana Ibrahim on a journey from Swindon to London. Never I trust Amali. Is she's a set girl, bro? Set girls are the worst type of females, bro. Like they're worse than your actual ops because you don't see them coming. Train. During the journey, Sana made 36 calls to Z team members, Psycho, Trey, and a 14 year old. The honey trap was laid. She's and forcing the plan was it. To ambush J Dot and Gashi. That's at a 36 or 38. At 11 p.m. When they got to the station, they were set upon by Z team members. But by the grace of God, both J Dot and Gashi managed to get away. 
with adrenaline pumping through his system. J dot clueless to the true nature of I love when niggas get away from setup chicks, you know. Because that means like like ha like having a setup chick, that's gone past the game. Like that's a cheat. That's a cheat in the game. Like I know these men be beefing each other and that, like like it's COD and that, yeah, but setup chicks, that's not in COD. Sana. Sana met with the Z team members to plan another attack. Sana then began looking for Jado and his friend. Jado and Gashi were spotted again, but this time on Homerton High Street. Jado was caught. He was stabbed three times in the chest as Sana watched on. Even in his last moments, Jado had no clue about her true nature. Jado was sadly pronounced dead at the scene. The three Z team members were arrested along with Sana. Prosecutor Timothy Cray QC said phone records linked. To be honest, the girl should be getting longer time than the niggas. Cause like, the niggas that be doing this, they know what they're getting themselves into. But I can't see a setup chick. That's all, that's unfair, bro. Ibrahim to the gang of the boys, while CCTV showed she met them after the initial ambush to plan the second deadly attack. The three defendants who did the stabbing did not act alone. They were assisted by the first defendant, Sana Ibrahim. Sana Ibrahim was initially thought to be a witness to the murder but told the issue of lies to the police. When she came to court, she claimed that Melengi and his friends had been planning to steal a stash of drugs she was looking for. Majority of this time, South Chicks get away less time than the man that done up them. Nah, facts, facts, facts. But they, they need to switch it so at least girls know once they're stepping into the lifestyle, they're getting birded off. After, and she would call for assistance to stop them. She also told the court that she had seen all three boys with knives after the attack as they ditched them in the canal. So Whoa, so you called us and now you're snitching. Serve, hey, serve the niggas right though. Why are you getting girls involved? That's cheating. Anna from Hackney, Trey Morgan from Clapham. And oh, she got 14 years though. She got a hefty one. <laughs> no. She looks familiar though, but no, man, I definitely don't know she is from. Williams, street name Psycho, from Woodford Green. I swear I knew this guy. And the 14 year old from Stoke Newton, all denied murder. Williams admitted wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm over a previous incident, but a jury of seven women and five men I definitely know that guy just still. two hours to convict Sana and the two other boys of Malenge's murder. Sana is set to serve at least 14 years in detention. Trey Morgan, who was banned from entering Hackney after being released from custody for another stabbing, was sentenced to 16 years. I definitely be Williams still. on bail for a previous... That means they're out now. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, potentially, because they could be doing halves. The stab attack at the time was sentenced to 18 and a half years, with two-year concurrent sentence for the first stabbing. The 14-year-old was sentenced to 12 years detention. Now, Sheggs was a Homerton member and close friends with J-Doc. He was deeply troubled by his murder, and this was the catalyst for him to fall deeper into the gang life. Despite Sheggs enrolling to the University of Stevenage, he was still a gang member regularly returning to the ends. Sheggs was one of Homerton's top scorers and would regularly score on Zen team members as a revenge for J-Dot. Now Stokey 16 are a gang based in the N16 slash E5 area of Hackney. They are heavily linked to ZT. On the 13th of November 2017, Sheggs and five other Homerton members travelled in a white van to Stoke Newerton looking for ops. Khan Aslan, a Stokey 16 affiliate, was spotted, chased and viciously stabbed by the attackers. Paramedics fought to save his life, but he was pronounced dead at the scene 15 minutes later. Sheggs was arrested, but shortly released. At least five men were thought to have taken part in the planned attack, but just one, Bruno 24, from Homerton, was standing trial for his murder. It originated in a rivalry between three gangs, the Niners, Stokey 16 and London Fields according to the Crown Court. Just a week before the attack, the defendant's brother, said to be a member of the Niners gang, so called after the E9 postcode, was attacked and seriously injured after driving. <laughs> this is a funny picture bro. Man got him in school uniform and the savages. That is funny. Happened with his girlfriend. 
The attack was then glorified in a gang rap video posted to YouTube which includes the lyrics Do him up in front of his baby mother couldn't give a F about his girlfriend. Hence this was the catalyst for Bruno and his friends to go out looking for a potential target or targets upon whom they could vent their anger and get revenge Mr Glasgow told the jurors. Upon seeing Khan Aslan the group chased down the target and butchered him. He was spotted in the street and his attackers demanded to know where he was from and when he tried to escape he was set upon. One of the stab wounds in Mr Aslan's chest- Master Bruno got 27 blood clot years. That's crazy. Yes was 12 centimeters deep and five centimeters left leaving a gash in his heart. Bruno was found guilty and centimeters left. Mr Aslan's chest was 12 centimeters deep and five centimeters left leaving a gash in his heart. Bruno was found guilty and sentenced to 27 years for the murder of Khan Aslan. As for Sheggs, he had caught his first body in the streets and despite that he was a free man. Shortly after, Sheggs returned to Stevenage and on the 24th of November, a police officer and some colleagues attempted to stop a black Vauxhall Astra that Sheggs was driving. He was driving without a license, driving with no insurance and in possession of cannabis. Sheggs left the officer with a head injury and fled the scene. Police dogs and a police helicopter were deployed in the area and a man was subsequently detained by officers at around 2.15 a.m. A short while later another two men were tracked in the same area by a police dog and they were also detained. All three men including Sheikhs were arrested on suspicion of GBH with a tent. The two other men aged 19 and 20 were released with no further action taken against them. Sheikhs however was to appear at Stevenage Magistrate Court in December. It didn't take no longer than a month for Sheikhs to strike again. Along with Unknown T and a few other Niners, they would attend a New Year's Eve party in Islington. A civilian known as Steve Narvez Jara got into a verbal war with them after he attempted to drop game on one of their girls. The situation quickly escalated and it turned into a- Girls, 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 girls. I'm sick and tired of hearing about girls being a chain of causation. Bro. Steve was rushed by the gang, he was stabbed in the chest and arm during the attack with a blow to the chest piercing his heart. Sadly, Steve was pronounced dead at the scene at around 3.30 a.m. Crazy. Sheggs now had two bodies and was still a free man. That nigga still killing people! That Sheggs dude must be our flipping... He must be our King Von from... 3.30 a.m. Sheggs now had two bodies and was still a free man. As for Unknown T, as Homerton's biggest rapper, he was really making a name for himself in the UK drill scene. His hit Homerton B later that year would become the first UK drill song to go silver, which is 200,000 sales in the UK. Damn. Just a few months after that fake- I remember when that song came out, I didn't like it at first, you know. I don't know why. But a lot of songs that I actually like now, I didn't like at first when I first listened to it. To New Year's Eve party and trouble would follow Shakes again. On the 4th of April 2000, this nigga stay home. Sheikh's real name Israel Ogunsola was cycling through Morning Lane in Hackney when he was spotted by Z team members Tiny Booth and B2 who were riding in a Vauxhall Astra. They approached him and all three individuals drew for their knives. Sheikh's managed to stab B2, however he was outnumbered and this resulted in Tiny Booth managing to stab Sheikh several times before the Z team members fled the scene. Sheggs was stabbed six times. The attack was so brutal that the paramedics had to rip him out of his clothes to treat him. So what? Is that class as is that class as um um is that class of self defence? Chat. Would that be class of self defence? If somebody stabs my boy, and I stab them now, is that self defence or no? Because I shouldn't be having a knife anyway. The attack was so brutal that the paramedics seen. Sheggs was stabbed six times. The attack was so brutal that the paramedics had to- What do you mean no way? Yes way. What do you mean I'm, I'm, I'm coming up against a flipping guy that's got two bodies under his name? He ain't done no time for it. I ain't fist fighting Donny. We got a- I understand why people have nice with, with situations like that. Cool, because that guy's clearly he, he's clearly ready to kill you. They pulled up on him two verse one, initiated it. Bro, no judge is gonna believe 
a guy that has two bodies under his name ain't going to initiate beef. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's not like it was his first body where it's like, all right, cool. Or, is it, or he just got into his second. Or He's already on his second. He was trying to go for a fourth. He was trying to get a kill streak. To rip him out of his clothes to treat him. Unfortunately, despite receiving first aid, he died at the scene about a half an hour later. Tiny Booth would flee the country and return to Africa where he was hiding till this day. As for B2, he would be... Hey, what? You can't, you can't get extradited? He, he almost got them both down as well. Nah, that's what I'm saying, bro. He was really trying to go for them Call of Duty kill street. Uh, despite fighting the murder case by insisting it was a self-defense, Jonathan Abora, a.k.a. B2, was convicted at the Old Bailey following a three-week trial and sentenced to 17 years. Ultimately, Sheggs was running on borrowed time for all the stuff he did. Now, just after a few months after Sheggs' death, Remember the murder him, Unknown T and others were a part of on the New Year's Eve? Well, Unknown T was charged with the murder of Stephen Narvez Jara, the 19-year-old. Damn! I ain't know that. Unknown T, whose real name is Daniel Lena, has also been charged with violent Daniel. disorder. Two other men, Mohamed Musa and Rahman Boland, both 20, were also charged with murder and violent disorder. Shakes would have been a part of this case. However, he died before he was charged, which makes you think if death didn't end his life, the law would have put him away for a long time. That's the same with um, Freeman King Vaughn. Now, apparently he, he, he would have been on a RICO case, he would have been in prison. So it's either he was going to end up in prison or he's going to die anyway. During Unknown T's period in jail, he got really close with Digger D. This flourished into a friendship and an alliance in the streets. Following the trial, Unknown T had insisted he had nothing to do with Steve's death, but he did not punch anyone and had no knowledge of anyone armed with a machete at the party. Unknown T and Borland were both cleared of murder, but Borland was convicted of manslaughter by a majority of 10 to 2. Unknown T dropped a fresh home as his first release out and it did very well. ZT were not happy about this link up for obvious reasons. So 88, a ZT member, got the drop on Digger D when he was in East London and robbed him for his diamond bracelet, then jumped on the track to brag about the robbery. For what? For what? I'm not I'm not I'm not dissing your friends. I never said I'm gonna bang for my man. We just had uh, a relationship because we were both in jail together, bro. Why the flip are you gonna start beef now there's more beef on the ends? These men are crazy. A friend of opposite oh, okay. A day ago, that's why you ain't got so I got all right. Did he get his popped up? Digger D, for obvious reasons, was not too happy and DM'd him this cryptic message of there being a countdown. As far as we know, till this day, nothing has happened to Mr. 88. On October 11, 2020, Dibba, aka Blacker, who was a ZT Joe rapper. And Fahim Rahman drove a stolen car to a property on Homerton High Street to carry out a drill. When they arrived at the property, they shot into a nearby park with a scorpion machine gun at three men they believed of. A scorpion and a submachine gun in COD. Yeah, I eat. The demons are different. Part of a rival gang. However, those they shot were innocent members of the public socializing in Homerton Park. Blacker was arrested on November 27th and charged with three counts of attempted murder. Matter of three Blacker, they done him dirty. Do you mean you're trying to kill innocents? How's that getting done dirty? That's what I don't get. That's what I don't get. That's what I don't get. If you're gangbanging, at least get the right guys, bro. Don't be getting the sieves or just because somebody lives on the block. That don't mean they're affiliated with anything. If I'm not, if I'm not trying to kill you, why the hell are you trying to kill me, bro? He got a long word. Listen to the sentence. All right, cool. Blacker was arrested on November 27th and charged with three counts of attempted murder and firearm offences. He was later sentenced to 35 years in prison, while Fahim Rahman got 27 years. Now at 8 p.m. So you're telling me the nigga nearly he didn't kill. 
nearly killed people or shot people. He got 35 years, but that nigga that killed two people got nothing. That's crazy. I'm on November 22, That's the longest bird I've seen in the UK. 35 years. Nah. 2020 at Broadway Market, Nina Samba, Arthur, Abidi, and Scarborough are all members associated with the Nines gang who went to the rival London Fields territory to film a music video. Up to 10 members of the Nine gang met in Victoria Park accompanied by a camera crew before making their way to Broadway Market. After being spotted by rival Z team members, a shootout occurred. Gunman opened fire at them discharging a number of bullets. Unfortunately, like all wars, people who have nothing to do with it get caught up in a violence. And Natalie Bignall, a woman who was standing outside a nearby pub, she was on a first date and it was a terrible misfortune to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was shot in the neck by a stray bullet. She has been left with C4 spinal cord injury, resulting in her becoming a quadriplegic at the age of 32. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that's not sad? That's what I'm saying, like, like. And this is gonna sound mad what I'm gonna say here, but it's like if you are gang members, at least kill each other correctly, bro. Why are you getting the public involved? And this is why your video get taken down, because you might not killing innocents or shooting up innocents or stabbing innocents, bro. Because I'm pretty sure as if like you might were just killing only each other, you might not be in like only banging on each other, not the public at all. Then no one can say anything, bro. Because you ain't going to harm anyone else's life. But nah, man, that, that is sad, fam. This life-shattering injury means she has lost the ability to move and feel anything from her neck down to her feet. The reality is that Natalie will never be able to walk again or have use of her hands. However, the severity of Natalie's injury means she requires 24-hour care specialist equipment regular physiotherapy and an accessible home that is able to cater to all of her needs. While her care is partially being funded by the NHS, without being able to work and receive a regular income, Natalie urgently needs additional support. I've linked her GoFundMe in the description box if you want to help. Nah. Ramel Arthur received- Them and our bad youths, bro. He got down seven women. Who did? T-Scam. Oh. Two years and four months for violent disorder. Samba jailed for two years and two months for the same offence. Kai Scarborough was jailed for one year and 11 months. And Ronnie Abidi, 27, of no fixed address, was jailed for two years and three months. Two years, is that it? Jailed for one year and 11 months. One year. And Ronnie Abidi, 27, of no fixed address, was jailed for two years and three months. Is that all now, the, what the hell? Risco, who goes by Shades, was charged with conspiracy to commit grievously bodily harm with intent, possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life, and possession of ammunition with intent to endanger life. He was also charged with five counts of attempted murder and one count of possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life on a separate shooting when shots were fired from one car at a group of men in another in Middleton Road. The 25-year-old suffered a head injury and was left fighting for his life in hospital. He is now in critical condition. Two other victims, all aged in their 20s, sustained minor injuries. It's fair to say that Shades is an absolute madman. He's yet to go to trial. Now Hypo, aka Big Hype, was an original London Fields boy, known for his tunes, money making and past work. On the 3rd of June 2020, Hypo was at a party in East London. Allegedly, at some point, Hypo had a disagreement with the bouncer at the party. The bouncer being Bigger, a rapper from Enfield. The situation escalated and Hypo backed out a ramble of Bigger and threatened him. Bigger allegedly walked off before coming back with a kitchen knife and stabbing Hypo in the chest, killing him. Bro, bro, why the hell is Donny going to stay in the same facility? Bro, if you just took out a knife on someone and they walk off and it's a nigger, then what's stopping that nigger from coming back? Nothing. So either you leave the area before the police come or you leave the area before it really does get sticky, bro. Like, that is crazy. 
before coming back with a kitchen knife and stabbing Hypo in the chest, killing him. This caused big problems in Fields because Bigger is Tiny who's a London Field Boy's cousin and Hypo was a Hackney legend. Bigger is currently on remand awaiting trial. KB aka Y. Booth was an older London Fields member being around since 2007. He was a part of the London Field Youngers but he was also close ties to London Field Boy members like Margs and Hypo. Later KB became zero tolerance but just to manage rappers like Lats, Blacker etc. On the 13th of August 2022, police were called to Forest Rice shortly before 9.30pm after reports of gunshots. The victim, 25 year old Casey Booth, he was driven to hospital by loved ones but tragically died there okay. from his injuries. His death was allegedly retaliation for the stabbing of Gashi 98. A day before and a get back for the 98s were itching for, constantly ridiculed by their ops for losing two members, they finally dropped something back. 98 members KO and Rico were from the 9th, Homerton and Hitman from the 8th being Holly Street. All three were charged for his murder, but before that, KO dropped an iconic diss track titled Laughing Stock. Dubbed UK's duo's best lyricist, KO eloquently pulled out his feelings on this track after feeling like he had answered his ops taunting. Bro, I thought this song was just a banger song. I didn't know like it actually had death behind it. Make me feel bad now, fam. His bro did it, um, now his little brother got killed. Bro, that's a cycle, bro. That's a cycle of being on the streets. Like, you ain't gonna have, you're not gonna be on top forever. Funny how we the laughing stock. Someone gets slapped and a laughing stops. As well as saying, load this nine and send them Lugas, but they lose their sense of humor. Blame it on the guys, it's rumors. Only those on the glass should know the shooter. What no one knows is smoother. Revenge has no expiring. Really, it's laughing stock. That's not the people in laughing stock. Ain't laughing stock with Diggity and Crankface. Should have been sooner. Sure, there'll be more in the future. He's currently fighting the case, and the trial is yet to start. That concludes the story so far. I send my condolences as always to the family of everyone I mentioned. Don't forget There's to hit remixes. that like and subscribe okay. button as it goes a long way. And stay tuned for more videos. Nah man, RIP everybody lost within the East London war. But flipping hell from that nigga got two murders and he bust them. Bust bust. And then he died. Because obviously that's how life goes bro. You can't... There's such thing called karma within gang life. Like... There's a lot of niggas that I know that's just, they've been on top. I'm saying they've been so on top where it's like they're walking down the road, everyone's crossing the road just so they're not on the same road as them. And then either they die or they just get shot and then they jump off road. Like for real. But that is crazy, man. RIP everyone that's been lost within the war, as I said, for me. Like, that's actually mad. But what do you think about yourself in the comments below? I want to see what you think. I want to see, like, your opinions. Um, what do you lot think about the Celtic? What do you lot think about Celtics as a whole? Because I hate them. Yeah. Oh, listen, though. We're on the road to 100k. Make sure you subscribe today. And let me know what other videos you lot want to see in it. Back out. Slap it out. Short, but I bang it. Pack it out. Man just, man just ping it or ching it. If I ain't did it, I still bring back it out. Kyle's probably hit squad, baby. Hit squad crazy. Rip man's...